Good evening and welcome. This is the India Today newsroom. I'm Rahul Kamal. Many in the opposition are asking, what does the surgical strike video really prove? Through the day today, we've been working with satellite navigation experts and on the newsroom tonight, through latitude and longitude coordinates on a map, we will show how this video actually demonstrates that the Indian Army did in fact cross the line of control, go into Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and blow up park terror camps. That's our top focus on the broadcast tonight. A daring special forces operation. The first visual evidence of what happened on the night of 29th September 2016. As Netas watch, bicker and play politics. India today decodes Army's revenge assault terror exporter Pakistan. Revealed exclusive details of the anti terror raid that neutralized launch pads in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. The surgical strike videos put out by the Indian government were meant to prove that the surgical strikes were not physical, that they did actually take place. But naysayers are still not convinced. This could be a war game. This could be a demonstration video shot anywhere. That's the question they asked. So what India Today did is we took the latitude and longitude coordinates written on these videos. We worked with experts in satellite navigation. We went to Google Earth and we plotted that on a map. Then we looked at where the LOC went from and found that the satellite navigates show that the coordinates actually are across the POK. Ankit Kumar shows how this video actually demonstrates through satellite coordinates that the Indian Army did actually carry out the surgical strikes on the other side of the line of control. Here it is. The most hostile territory imaginable. Under cover of darkness, 20 months ago, teams of Indian Special Forces soldiers mounted a revenge operation in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the likes of which the Modi government said India had never done before. 20 months later, as politics explodes over the operation, the first ever visual evidence of the surgical strikes has broken the surface, setting alarm bells in the subcontinent and once again placing the daring mission front and center. The videos depicting the brutal overnight attack on park-built terror launch pads across the line of control throw fresh light on the dangerous assault. They depict the unrelenting firepower unleashed by the Indian Special Forces teams as they decimated launch pad after launch pad with small arms and heavy weapons. But most interesting of all, the videos have thrown up a tantalizing nugget. The video clips that have surfaced have coordinates embedded in them. The first indications of where the attacks actually took place. Now, presuming these coordinates haven't been masked to protect mission data, a superimposition of the video coordinates places the map marker at this location very well within Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. A simple measurement of the location from the line of control establishes the distance as being in the region just under two kilometers. The only official account of the surgical strikes so far establishes that the depth of the launch pads were located between four to six kilometers inside POK. So the video is very likely to depict part of the firefight in the early hours. The only official account of the surgical strike so far establishes the use of both small arms as well as rockets and heavy weaponry. Another fact confirmed by the video, which clearly shows the use of heavy weapons. The aerial footage that forms part of the clip also confirms the officially recorded version on the use of an Indian Air Force Heron drone to keep tabs on the attack site and the battle damage, even as the assault was conducted in total radio silence. These videos provide the first visual evidence of what happened on the night of September 29th, 2016 and bear out the only official version so far, which establishes a brutal nighttime ambush 
of a set of clueless terrorist launch pads. They further establish the unrelenting and rapid nature of the mission. As these video clips explode across the political landscape of election-bound India, a daring special forces operation conducted far from India's power centers is proving to be an infinite and powerful political weapon. Bureau Report, India Today. India Today establishing through latitude and longitude coordinates on Google Earth that the Indian Army did in fact cross the line of control. This is what Pakistan and many in the opposition were saying may not have happened. These were called, remember, physical strikes. That brings me to part one of the newsroom showdown tonight. Has the surgical strike video demolished the physical strike bogey that was sought to be created by some in the opposition? Joining us on this broadcast, I want to begin by introducing Admiral Arun Prakash, former chief of the Indian Navy. With us also on this broadcast, veteran Major General G.D. Bakshi, representing the BJP tonight, GVL Narsimha Rao, representing the Congress, Tom Vadakan, representing the left, Atul Lanjan. I want to go across to General Bakshi first, because there were many who said this is a physical strike video. Do you believe that by putting out the surgical strike video, the Indian Army and the Modi Sarkar have demolished once and forever any doubt, any aspersion that may have been cast about whether these strikes happened, whether they are real. Has that been demolished once and forever? General Bakshi. You know, uh, Rahul, I am quite convinced that a lot of time obsessive <laughs> secrecy is counterproductive. Secrecy is required till the time your operation is launched. But when the last boy has come in from across the line of control, I think then we should have put that video out then and there itself. There is very little on it which is so classified or so secret. After all, a Carl Gustav is a platoon weapon. And if you are going to classify that around or as a secret, I think it is self-defeating, obsessive secrecy which has created a lot of leeway for uh, scope, for rumors and uh, tendentious uh, kind of uh, innuendos and conjectures. Uh, let me put the whole thing in context. You know, uh, just uh, uh, when Osama bin Laden had been smoked out by the American SEALs, you know, General Parvez Kayani, the then Pakistan Army Chief, was booed by his own officers, jeered by his own officers. Unfortunately, the same thing happened to General, uh, you know, Rahim Sharif when he was about to demit office. He had a self-image of himself as a self-styled Napoleon, uh, somebody who wanted to be anointed a field marshal, you know. And that is the time when our surgical strikes went in. Okay. You think the Pakistan army would have admitted to such a strike? They tried their standard trick, the standard response of absolute lies and dissemination. Absolute lies. Okay, I want to go across the to Admiral Arun Prakash. Our leaders, some Be of our leaders, bought it. Because they you said earlier Pakistani today, Admiral, that the, the Indian Army, Army should not have put out the video, the video, that there was no I'm need spotting. to do so. General Bakshi says there's no need for obsessive secrecy. It's only till an operation is live that you need to be careful about it. Beyond that, there's nothing really classified such information because it demolishes the bogey of this being a physical strike that's an important bogey to demolish admiral well as a naval person i'm a bit of an outsider but purely from a layman's point of view uh, i think military operations especially of a covert nature like this one conducted by special forces should normally be kept secret there is no need you you, you, you launch them for a purpose, the surgical strikes, and if the purpose has been achieved, they know it, we know it, our army knows it, and that's good enough. There is no need to go public as far as I can see. Uh, because once you go public, uh, the Pakistanis of course denied it, which was the right thing on their part to do. They denied it, they would. Now, in order to convince our people, our political parties, uh, to bring this issue into television studios, have television anchors with all respect to you gentlemen, having to dissect such issues, I don't think it achieves any purpose. Uh, the, we know we lost our strike.
the Pakistanis know the strike was received by them and the matter should end there. Because if you bring these things into public discourse, then the generals will want to look over their shoulders and say, uh, did we do the right thing? Did we please our political masters? This is most undesirable. Um, the military should be kept out of public discourse, especially when political points are being scored by either side. Okay, let JVL Narsima Rao respond to this because when questions were asked by the opposition just in the aftermath of the surgical strike that the video should be put out, the army said exactly what Admiral Arun Prakash is saying. They know it, we know it, there is no need for evidence. This reveals our standard operating procedures. It shows the kind of weaponry we have. It shows the kind of digital equipment we have to track these operations. And therefore, we don't need to make it public. The Pakistani army knows what's being done. The only thing that's changed is that we're now heading into election season. So is this mostly being done, JVL Narsima Rao, for internal political consumptions? Because Pakistan denied it earlier. They've denied it now. So it's not as if you put the video out and Pakistan is saying, ha ha, ab to manna padega, inhone attack kiya. They're not saying that. Ne, uh, Rahul, which are the elections that are due next month? I think if you're referring to the 2019 elections in May, I, I think isn't it far-fetched for you to say this has been done with an eye on elections? We could have very well done this uh, in March 2019. And there is there is there are no elections <clears throat> scheduled for several months now but i think it's a professional decision i'm sure made by the armed forces and i heard lieutenant general uh, mr huda who was actually the man who was commanding the entire operation he himself said this could as well have been released at that time he absolutely has no qualms he, he was happy that this has been put out in public domain like general what general bakshi is saying now mr lieutenant general huda said exactly the same thing so and uh, i think the only thing that has happened now is that opposition parties political parties like the congress some section of communist uh, 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 amadmi party they now today have egg on their faces because you have a video recorded evidence and they cannot fudge anymore I think all these fraudsters get exposed today and I think this is a moment of celebration for the entire country. Okay. People of this country, what the army told us now, this is on an the day strikes have been that GVL makes, the world. And a point that Tom Vadakan from the Congress promises. needs to respond to. You know, to say we're in the middle of election season, that this is a political stunt by Prime Minister Modi is unfair. Because there's no election till at least November, December. If they'd done it days ahead of polling in Gujarat or Karnataka, you could have said, they're doing this for votes. Elections in India are due in April, May next year. Elections in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan due at the end of the year. This is not election season. And therefore, to attribute a direct political motive, is that even fair? Tom Badakar. Rahul, this is the season for film releases. Now, we have, we have seen the first one on emergency 43 years later. Then we saw another film, now this. Now, but one question that I want to ask my friend uh, Marcima Rao is, why not release it to through PIB or DPR? You see, it's going out selective. If you believe that this film is something genuine and is as a news value and it's an authentication of the BJ, uh, the claim of not the Congress but the BJP MP, uh, Arun Shoriji, you called it a farcical strike. You want to prove it to him that should have been released through PIB or DPR. Why this selective leak, uh, my friend? Because why are these questions being in public domain? You create oh, your own suspicion. If you can give it to DPR, you, there's an institution. You release it through PIB and nobody is going to question you that uh, you need to do a forensic test or what. We believe you. We, we said Congress President uh, Sonia Ji supported it. She supported it. She supported the government. She supported the strike. And now there are different voices. You may question us that some people in our party may have said something or the other but what about your party people who still don't believe you so i think to be transparent release it through dpr or release no, it no, through sorry. pib uh, that would ensure this is a very facile argument one second one country. second once the video is put out whether it's put out through the press information bureau or it's put out uh, through a leak that's immaterial the question is admiral arun prakash does the video in any way jeopardize our 
national security? Does it compromise the operating tactics of the special forces? Those are the questions to look at. What's your answer? Do you believe that in any way by putting out this video, have we sent a strong message that, you know, not just did we do it, there's videographic evidence that the operations happened, or do you believe it compromises future operations in any way? Admiral. Well, if the Pakistanis denied it to start with, they are liable to say that this video is fake. I mean, it's not difficult to make videos of this nature. So I don't think that this has any real substance in it. But what I must remark is that the level of political discourse in our country is falling to deplorably low levels. Uh, the politicians can do whatever they want, but to bring the armed forces into it, to cast aspersions either side, I think is uncalled for and they are treading on very dangerous ground. Because the more you bring the army or the armed forces into such discourse, the more you risk politicizing them. Then the generals will be tempted to say one thing or the other. Once you politicize this fine armed forces of ours, then we are really lost. I think the politicians need to take a step back and if one party or the other is making silly remarks, then the other party should maintain a dignified silence and say that the Indian army always tells the truth and let the DGMO speak for himself. That's an important point the Admiral makes and I want to show you in fact the kind of unseemly politics that's played out through the day uh, where the army has been put in the middle of a pincer attack from the opposition at the government and a counter attack from the government aimed at the opposition and what's very unfortunate is while they can fight over things like price rise, corruption, uh, inflation and what have you, fighting over something like the Indian army, that is deeply disturbing for the men who guard our country and keep it one. I show you the politics and then we'll debate what the Admiral just said. Should both parties really back off from politicizing anything to do with the Indian Army? Here's the story first though. A daring cross LOC operation that left Pakistan fretting and fuming. A strike that avenged 2016 Uri attack. An army operation that has triggered a massive political war. More than one and a half year later, the undeniable proof is out. On September 29th, 2016, India's para commandos carried out a massive pre-dawn strike where at least seven terror launch pads in Pakistan were destroyed. 38 terrorists and two Pakistani soldiers were gunned down. These images from four strikes finally give video proof of how India's braves destroyed terror targets in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. The 2016 surgical strike was India's blistering revenge for the 18 Jawan that were martyred in a cowardly attack on the army in Uri just 10 days before the operation. The recent video proof has triggered a massive war of words yet again with the government and opposition locking horns. The opposition has lashed out at the government even questioning the timing of the video being released. The BJP, on the other hand, has demanded an apology. An echo press conference, posters, banners, holdings, Dwara Bhari Bharkam Prachar Prasar Karte Hue, Surgical Strike Ka Pura Shre, Sena Ki Bajaye, Bharti Janta Party or Pradhan Mantri Modi Ko De Dala. Jab Surgical Strike Hua. तो कांग्रेस वालों ने कहा कि सबूत चाहिए और कांग्रेस के साथ अरविंद केजरीवाल वगैरह सब ने सबूत मांगा अब जब सबूत सामने में आते हैं तो फिर कहते हैं कि पब्लिसिटी है तो आखिर चाहता क्या है बहुत ही अफसोस की बात है कि ये पार्टी ने इतने सालों तक हिंदुस्तान को राज किया हिम्मत है तो ये कहें कि हमने इसको सही समझते हुए हालात को देखते हुए हमने सबको बुलाकर ये दिया है प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में देते चुप छुप कर क्यों दे रहे हैं छुप कर क्यों दे रहे हैं और आप लोग उसे छुपा क्यों रहे हैं आप सच्चाई बताइए हैव यू बिकम सो डेस्परेट आफ्टर रिपीटेड रिवर्सेस दैट यू विल क्वेश्चन द मोराल 
the courage and commitment of the armed forces aisa to aaj tak nahi hua tha kam se pehle bharat mata congress party the political war is on just like it was in 2016 will the video proof end up influencing 2019 polls with mosimi singh and ashutosh mishra in delhi bureau report india today you know is it high time that neta stop politicizing every action of the indian army the indian army doesn't respond and report to the congress or the bjp the army is the indian army and therefore atul and jan it's very important for neta to back off you want to attack prime minister modi you want to attack the rss you want to attack the bjp do so but don't use the indian army as the instrument of your attack and that's really unfair atul and jan I agree with uh, Rahul ji with you what you have said but what is to do when some jingoist people former military people are trying to make such type of a sta uh, statement which creates the political problem and I would just want to tell you what happened in Pakistan some military officers you see made some sort of politi they politicized the military and what happened the democracy vanished from the Pakistan you see surface and now we are seeing even the so called democracy this is almost covered by the military and the isi i just want to take this surgical our military people of the world class people if we see their role in the united nation peacekeeping forces i salute them because of their bravery we could face all sorts of the challenges and we have saved our motherland and our territory but the question is this if the surgical strike was correct why it is being shown now it is because the madhya pradesh rajasthan and chatisgarh elections are due before 15th of november mr gl reddy i just want to tell you it is not the may 2019 and before that six months before that the election commission will wake no nothing to can be done okay so let gvl respond atul and jan's counter is if you done, done it close to november it would have been too obvious no, just, just, therefore just, you just, done just, it in a build up just, 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 it's no. happening as part of a larger strategy <laughs> the whole focus on the emergency these are all dots on the election chart board and it's if, if that's not the motive you tell our viewers gvl what is the motive why is the government release the video why now you explain it to us no no uh, rahul this <clears throat> i i think uh, uh, it's so unfortunate that uh, that my friend uh, 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 from the congress calls it a video or it's a film please don't demean it it it's not just a okay, film respond gvl to the question been, uh, i asked why has this video, like this video been released created. now 630 not... days after no, the I, operation I, I, no, Ra it could Rahul... have been released any other you're saying it's not linked to the elections so what are you trying to prove if it's not politics what is it why it could... have you released it you explain it to me no no i i think it had to be Ra Ra rahul rahul this had to be this had to be released sometime or the other but it's a question of when to release it is entirely a decision that the professional leadership makes government will and will never do anything that will remotely jeopardize our own security forces or our own security i think government does not do such things you know, the, uh, without the, the one thing them. It's the one thing that can the be government. said so let's general not, gd why bakshi now? you could ask this question 6 months later no one second general gd bakshi if it had been released days ahead of polling you would have said okay this is done with an eye purely on the election was shown this video was shown Gen general bakshi the bbc has shown earlier the film Gen general bakshi the, the, the fact the bbc is, has the shown the film you got a big amarnath okay fade us down please the you got a big amarnath yatra happening one thing that can be said is ahead of the amarnath yatra which is very sensitive the pilgrims are vulnerable you put out this attack to tell pakistan you attack this yatra we will come after you with the entire might of the indian army we will come and get you is that the message that's being sent general bakshi you know uh, once again we must understand the context i would like to point out that we have had a problem of national morale for the last 30 years for the last 30 years we have so finely 
restricted ourselves to defensive defense on our own side of the LC and international border. We have let Pakistan carry out its asymmetric war of a thousand cuts unchecked. First 10 years in Punjab, then 20, then for the last about 25, 30 years in JNK, and then all over the country. You know, there was a sense of frustration amongst the Indian population. Why can't we hit back? And if we have to hit back, why do we have to do it in a thievish, clandestine fashion? Why can't India boldly exercise the right to hot pursuit, to hit Pakistan back, raise costs and consequences for its asymmetric adventurism, teach Pakistan a lesson, put an end to this, deter such uh, uh, attacks. Let Admiral Arun Prakash respond. I, I see some merit in what General Bakshi is saying that for the yeah, longest time, we Admiral, we've taken hits in this very Gandhian fashion. We've, we've taken hits, we've been passive defensive. Symbolism. This is Ajit Doval's strategy of aggression. You know, it's aggressive defense. While we're defending ourselves, we're also attacking them, keeping them on the back foot so that the enemy knows you mess with India, there are consequences. It's not as if you can keep hitting us, we'll keep taking the hit. And therefore, there's a strong message being sent to the enemy, dare not mess with us again. Admiral. I think it will be a sad day when the Indian Army needs proposed promotional films to uh, advertise its combat capability. The Army's action should speak far louder than any film clip, video clip or anything like that. If the first set of cross-border strikes did not have the desired impact, then we, we will, and if required, we will launch, you know, even more powerful strikes, etc. That's one. Secondly, it is totally ir immaterial and irrelevant what any politician believes or doesn't believe. The Indian Army is far too important an institution to pander to, you know, try and convince politicians. And thirdly, I don't think we give enough credit to the common <coughs> voting citizen of India. Uh, today, everybody listens to these uh, television studio debates, enjoys all the yelling and screaming that goes on and then makes up his own opinion. So let me just tell everyone present here that TRPs don't automatically translate into votes on the ground. So don't waste, don't bring down the armed forces to the level of you know being debated in, in television studios. They are sacrosanct, leave them alone, uh, let their capabilities um, you know, Strong words from the Admiral there. The Army to, doesn't need a promotional film to Tom Tom its achievements. The military's actions speak for themselves. I'll slip into a quick break. When we come back, we look at whether or not the surgical strikes have had the desired effect. If we look back since September 2016, has there been an increase in infiltration, a decrease in infiltration, are terror attacks going up, terror attacks coming down? We look at whether the surgical strikes have actually helped in deterring Pakistan. That since the time the surgical strikes have happened, the one question that's been asked often is, have the strikes achieved their desired objective? Has Pakistan been deterred? Will there be another terror attack in the future? Let's look at what the data tells us about civilians being killed, about military personnel being killed, about terrorists being killed. And then we'll try and understand whether or not the surgical strikes actually achieved the objective for which they were meant. Here's the report. Modi Sarkar ki vifalta ka sabse bada saboot yehi hai ke September 2016 ki surgical strike ke baad 146 senik shaheed ho chuke. The proof is in the open. This is how the September 2016 surgical strikes were carried out. But the question that remains unanswered, has anything changed after the punishing attack on Pakistani terror camps? Pakistan 1600 se adek bar nyantran rekha ka ulanghan their contention, India's braves have struck the enemy, but have we as a country done enough to build on their effort? In 2017, a year since the surgical strike, 83 security personnel have been killed, while 57 civilians have lost their lives. In 2018, 43 security personnel and 40 civilians have been killed in the first six months alone. 
The same contention that is being raised by former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Omar Abdullah but is being denied by the centre. After our strong response across the borders, the cross-border violence has certainly come down. As long as you have a, a, a neighbour like Pakistan, you have to live with this kind of uh, uh, like rogue state activity. Here is the army which is ready to respond strongly. Mm -hmm. That one should appreciate. But while no one should doubt the capability of the armed forces, what about the support that they should be getting by way of arms and resources? Deposing before the Parliamentary Standing Committee, Vice Army Chief Lieutenant General Sharak Chand said that 65% of its arsenal is obsolete and that the force lacks the artillery, missiles and helicopters that will enable it to fight on two fronts, that is Pakistan and China. What's even more worrying is the budget allocated to the army. The army had asked for 37,121,000 crores to fund 125 schemes. But what it got was only 21,338 crores, a shortfall of a whopping 15,783 crores, insufficient for existing requirements and for new schemes to be finalized. Because everything is centralized in the PMO, therefore nothing is being done in other ministries. And in the PMO, they wait for him and he is uh, somewhere at the latest event. So that is the problem. The question of doubting the army does not arise. But can the country simply rest on their laurels while giving the army no backup? Do we not owe it to those who lay their life on the line without batting an eyelid? With Sandeep Unnithan and Mosmi Singh in Delhi and Shuja Ulhaq in Srinagar, Bureau Report, India Today. So have these surgical strikes succeeded in deterring Pak Army generals? That's the big question and that's what we'll now look at. We put together some data comparing the situation in Jammu and Kashmir before the surgical strikes with what's happened in the two years since. So let's start with the number of terrorists being killed. The number of terrorists killed uh, was 39 in 2016, the year the surgical strikes happened. Since then, in the next year, it went up to 218. Uh, and then in the current year, it's at 93. So the number of terrorists killed is up. But what about security personnel being martyred? Uh, 2016 was 88, 2017 was 83, which is roughly the same. 2018, it's less, but that's also because the year is only half done. Then let's look at civilians. The number of civilians killed was 14 in 2018. 16, it went up to 57 in 2017 and is at 36 now. So that's the question. Uh, General G.D. Bakshi, if these strikes were so successful, if they achieved the strategic purpose with which they were intended, the number of civilians being killed, the number of military personnel being killed is either going up or is the same. And therefore, I ask you, how do we conclude that they've achieved the purpose with which they were meant? General Bakshi. Look, let me be candid and absolutely uh, forthright. The surgical strikes, to our mind, were supposed to be the start of an open season, a two-way traffic across the line of control. Just one surgical strike, deterring Pakistan for the next 30 years. What an imbecilic conception. We thought this was the start of open season, hot pursuit operations across the line of control for every one Pakistani operation of the nature of Uri or Pathan Court, there would be three or four across the line of control. But if you put a full stop after the first surgical strike and say it is adequate for 30 years, then I'm sorry you need to have your head examined. I mean, I'll okay, be let Admiral Arun Prakash respond to this, that it that is an asinine juvenile strike. assumption that one surgical strike will change the behavior of the Pakistani army forever. It's to send a message, you attack us, we come and get you. And therefore, since then, no Uri, no Pathan court has happened. And in that sense, Pakistan seems to have got the message. They're poking us, but that prick in the eye which hurts an attack on parliament to 2611. Pakistan knows full well if they were to attack India, this current government will come and smash them. Okay, I don't think body counts or head counts, etc., are the right indicator for uh, success or otherwise of these strikes. 
I think the significance is quite different. Um, I'm sure the Indian Army has for many years been going across the border and doing what they thought was required. But on this particular occasion, the significant point was that the government of India was not only willing to take full responsibility, but also go public with this decision to strike them. I think that is the significance and that must have conveyed a message to the Pakistan Army, ISI and the government of Pakistan that the attitude of the government of India has now changed. They are not only willing to uh, come across and do something, they are willing to take full responsibility for it. And I'm sure that that has changed a lot of thinking in Pakistan. Perhaps one set of strikes may not be enough. Uh, maybe we need to uh, follow it up with <coughs> more powerful or no, more Madakan, or because this was the central of theme responses. of but the congress sure press conference this morning that nothing has changed pehle bhi attack hote the ab bhi hote hain what's the difference the difference is a message has been communicated which is why since september 2016 yeah, the, no re congress no pathan court rahul uh, the the message has been lost in translation the issue here is if one surgical strike is intended to send a message in surgical strikes or surgical operations, two things happen. Either your operation succeeds or it fails. I'm neither commenting on it. But point is, if political parties use this to please, to attract their constituency, Pakistan will try and repeat it. To please their constituency, where will this end? This kind of messaging is not what is important. What is important is how much you spend on your defense, how much you spend on the brave hearts of this country. 1.5 of the GDP is what you spend on defense expenditure. On the standing committee, army generals openly say that out of the up-to-date uh, equipment, 8% is up-to-date and 68% is vintage. I'm not talking about vintage wine. I'm talking about weapons, uh, Bakshiji. So these are things which you need to speak, not political people like me. You need to say how much more defense forces need to be armed. You can't showcase something. The lives that have been lost, the lives that have fought for you, the lives that have given everything for this country. But what have you done for them? Okay, don't let, let GVL, let GVL respond to this. You know, look, at, look at the fact Bakshi that we don't have, I want that, I want that data that to stay on the screen. Yeah, yeah. We I don't have an integrated, one, one second, GVL. We don't have an integrated chief of defense staff. Uh, SCAG reports show, PSE reports show, we don't have adequate modern weapons. A lot of our equipment is vintage. The national security stra strategy doctrine is not complete just yet. Uh, the chief of defense staff not in place. There are multiple aspects of defense reform that have been largely ignored in the last four and a half years. And that is the structural reform that the Modi Sarkar was expected to bring in. You haven't done that. Instead, you're using the surgical strikes to show how macho your government is. Whereas what you really should have done in terms of fixing the weapon systems, fixing the command and control organizational structure of the army, that you haven't delivered on. Uh, uh, <coughs> Rahul, look at the double-tongued uh, nature of the Congress party. On the one hand, you attack the army. Gulam Nabi Ajad, leader of the opposition, attacks army. He speaks the language of Lakshare Taiba. And he gets a pat in the back from Lakshare Taiba. And uh, you have Congress leaders questioning the army, even as of yesterday, not when the surgical strikes happened. So when you have an opposition party, which has become a fringe player today, that's what Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad said today. They are only trying to spread doom and gloom to lower the morale of the forces. The facts really speak for themselves. In the last four years, the budgetary allocations, the capital expenditure is significantly higher than what it was. The defense minister gave out all the numbers. If you have the time, I can read the numbers. So it's it's not that things have got worse. Things have improved in the last four years. You can make but that speech. There is much you can more make that, that speech in the Rajya but Sabha, have to look but at not on the public domain. Of our budget. Truth, 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 Mr. Narsimara. No, no, but you. Truth, what about truth, Gulam Nabi Aga? Mr. Narsimara. What about Ms. Truth what about is what is required in public domain. What about you can go to Rajya Sabha and make speeches. 
But you know nobody is going to believe it. No. Nobody is going to believe it. And you want it. to come no, and give us I will not give this debate to DJ. One second. No, GVL, 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 this is the problem I have. One second. This is what I'm not okay with. We can't have the Indian Army, anything to do with the Indian Army, turn into a tutu meme between two parties that are going into elections. That's not right. That's not doing service to the brave Indian captain, major, soldier who's serving at 18,000 feet in Siachen. That is simply not right. And, you know, Atul Anjan, my fervent prayer as we end this broadcast tonight is that leave the army out of politics. You know, you want to attack the BJP, you want to attack the Modi Sarkar, you don't like the Sangh, do it all the time. But don't use the uh, army Rahul, as the instrument, started? instrument of your attack. That really, really is not right. Atul Anjan. My, uh, I, uh, I agree with uh, Rahul ji what you have said, but I just want to sell. This country wants to know that much. That why our Prime Minister has gone to meet Nawaz Sharif, what transpired between them. The, we, people are still, we have to know. But at the same time, the <laughs> Seventh Pay Commission is not being, you see, uh, introduced to the military. They are, the, our soldiers are waiting for that. They were on a strike. They were, the ex-soldiers were on the hunger strike and all that. They were removed from there. But only one thing, within one couplet I want to say, the, from the, on behalf of the, uh, what the, our uh, soldiers think, Pyasi thi zameen, sara lahu pila diya. Pyasi thi zameen, sara lahu pila diya. मुझ पर वतन का कर्ज था मैंने उसे चुका दिया और मैंने उससे कहा जलाने को एक चिराग उसने इस बहाने मेरा घर जला दिया नो नो आई डोंट नो वेदर द सोल्जर्स आर सेइंग दैट नॉट जीडी बख्शी डू यू हैव अ फाइनल काउंटर बिकॉज़ ही इज कोटेड अ उर्दू कपलेट एग्जिस्टिंग दिस इज व्हाट द सोल्जर्स आर थिंकिंग जनरल बख्शी वेरी क्विकली अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम 20 सेकंड्स सर फाइनल काउंटर इट इज द इट इज इट इज द एक्स सोल्जर्स आर सेइंग you know, I, I, I would entirely go along with what our naval chief has said, Admiral Prakash had said. In every mature democracy, there is a bipartisan consensus on issues of national security. Very sadly, in our country, that bipartisan consensus has totally eroded and broken down. And every second day, we see a very unedifying spectacle of parties using the armed forces to fly at one another's throat. Please leave us alone to do our job. We've got a job to do. But I would again like to reiterate, the time has now come to raise costs and consequences for Pakistan. One surgical strike was a very good beginning. We did not need full stops and semicolons. I, need, I, I think we need to go ahead and give Pakistan as much clubbering as it wants till it is deterred from this adventurism. I think that is now essential. The time has come for that. I'm going to let that be the last word on our broadcast this evening. A message has indeed gone across the line of control. A message ringing loud in the ears of every general in Rawalpindi in Pakistan Army headquarters. If you attack India, India will hit back. Of that, there can be no mistake. And we won't hit back in a fashion that doesn't get announced to the public. It will be announced and Pakistan will have to deal with the consequences at a time when they're heading into elections in July. Very, very interesting timing for this video to be put out. Admiral Arun Prakash, General G.D. Bakshi, Tom Badakhan, Jivyan Narsimha Rao, Atul Anjan for joining me in what's been a sensible discussion, different points of view and we always leave it to our viewers to decide which point of view they believe has the greatest merit. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.